Hello everybody and welcome to the season three finale of Coffee Break, the show where we break down interesting topics all within the time it takes you to enjoy a few cups of coffee. Today I'll be your host, Clifford Swartz, an engineer at Microchip Technology, and today we have the pleasure to talk to you all about controlling motors in space. But I won't be doing this discussion alone. Through the power of the internet, I am joined by a very special and wonderful guest, Dorian. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. It's the season finale. It's, uh, it's big. Yeah, me too. And so before yes. we dive into the topic of space and motors in space, I'm going to throw it over to Michael Pierce in the booth, and he's going to tell all of you wonderful people how to participate. How you doing, Michael? I'm doing good, and yeah, this is the season finale, and it's something else for us as well, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, looking forward to this discussion. Anything in space is always fun to learn about. Um, we're broadcasting live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, please submit your questions in the chat, and we will try and get to them after the presentation. Um, if we can't, you can always email us at livestream at microchip.com, and we'll make sure Dorian gets it. Um, also, share us. We love being shared. We love growing this this awesome crowd of people around the world that that watch. <laughs> um, and yeah, back to you. Thank you very much, Michael. So, Dorian, getting right to it, talk to me about space and where we can see motors in space. Oh wow, uh, they're they're everywhere in space. No, not everywhere. But uh, you stop to think about anything that's moving in space, and there's so much going on. I mean, look at a good example is the recent, you know, Mars Perseverance rover, right. uh, the little helicopter. I mean, just think of all the the motion that was going on in that small device, and all the motors that uh, have to. Uh, be in play. So there's just so much going on. And um, so, you know, robotics, a lot of robotics on that system and a lot of, a lot of robotics in, in everyday uh, space activities. So you've got robotic arms to, um, you know, help with maintenance or just maneuver things around. You also have solar arrays. So uh, when a satellite is launched up into orbit, once it reaches orbit, these solar arrays deploy uh, and are positioned and then continue to be positioned so that it picks up all the, you know, optimally picks up the sun's rays. And that's right. what powers the satellite. So very vital for that motor control. You also have uh, telescopes and cameras, you know, grandiose like the Hubble telescope to uh, smaller cameras that are used, uh, you know, in numerous uh, low Earth orbit constellations to monitor certain things on the Earth, measure things on the Earth. So you've got, uh, you know, lens, ca lens covers, you have shutters, and you have the actual telescopic element. So just so much in play out in space. Right, there's a lot going on. And so from my yeah. understanding of space, it's an incredibly harsh environment. Do you mind talking to me a little mm -hmm. bit about some of the critical requirements that designers have to think about when sending things off into space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for one, any anytime you launch anything, you know, you have to overcome gravity. So uh, you want to make things as, as light as possible, really right. get that weight down. Uh, you're actually charged. Emissions are charged a dollar per kilogram. Wow. So um, you really want to make it as light as possible. And that's going to also you know, how you do that is to reduce board space or components that are required. So uh, some of these ICs and the one I'm going to be focused on today in particular is very highly integrated. So you can see from this photo here, uh, this is an actual card used, used in a spacecraft. And you can see the amount of, of circuitry, the components that are integrated by the red hatched area that are integrated down into this LX7720. So you really get up to a 50 to 75% uh, board space reduction 
engine, which reduces the weight, very significant. And you also increase your reliability because you have fewer components that you're dealing with, fewer solder joints, you know, anything that could go wrong. So you get increased reliability too. And so that's sort of a huge reduction in space just alone, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, so that's why this part is the best. Right. It's key. And so <laughs> diving a little deeper into this part, the LX7720, do you mind talking a little bit more about that? Sure. So the LX7720 is a rad hard motor controller. And so when and you say rad hard, <clears throat> sorry, uh, what does that mean? Is that like a, uh, a qualification or a certification that you get? And how do you actually make something rad hard? Sure. Rad hard stands for radiation hardened. So uh, what that means, and this in particular is radiation hardened by design. So let me talk about radiation first. Uh, in the space environment, uh, there's a lot of radiation that we don't get here on Earth. And that radiation can actually uh, you know, affect the function and, and cause things to fail. So it's very important that these ICs are built to withstand that kind of radiation exposure. <clears throat> uh, rad hard by design means that we actually start at the ground up uh, when we're conceptualizing the part and then take it to design. We're designing this uh, with that radiation tolerance in mind. And we have a team of expert engineers. Uh, they've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, so we have a lot of flight history with the, these rad hard parts. They know how to create certain elements. They know what processes to choose, um, how to do the testing. So from the very design uh stages these are made to withstand that radiation that you see out in space i like it yeah and so more on the lx7720 you can see here again i've said it before it's very highly integrated um, we pack a lot into this device and uh, you can see some of the major functions it has four half bridge drivers four floating differential current sensors you've got a resolver, or LVDT interface, and a lot of, you know, IOs. Um, it comes in a 132-pin hermetic ceramic quad flat pack and also a quad uh, plastic flat pack as well. Wow. So all of those different features, and I'm sure there's even more, are different components that you could be removing from an existing design. And uh, it's pretty massive exactly. when we're talking about space. So exactly. one of the things you mentioned and one of the things we can see in the block diagram is that this is a companion Piece. So you'd be looking for an mm -hmm. MCU or mm -hmm. an FPGA. Do you mind right. talking about some of the microchip FPGAs or MCUs that you would expect to pair with this? Yes, so you're absolutely right. Uh, especially for motor co control, you really need a digital component. And, and for other ICs in the mixed signal realm, they do the mixed signal functioning, but you really need this digital component too. So they they are companion ICs. It really is a partnership. Um, so what we've developed to help with, uh, you know, our customers' development systems and evaluating the product and actually demonstrating motor control, um, we have developed tools that will uh, connect into these other companion devices that microchip offers. Uh, primarily, we have both FPGAs and MCUs. And so what we do is we have this development board, the LX7720 daughter board is what we call it. And it can connect directly into FPGA boards that we have uh, through a FMC connector. It can also connect into our microcontroller boards. This, in, this this particular photo that you see here is the LX7720 daughter board connecting into the SAM RH71 MCU uh, development kit. And so we provide the linker boards and the flex cable necessary to do that. Um, they have that business unit, the MCU, has developed the firmware that will support this demonstration. And likewise, uh, we have the same daughter board will plug into uh, an F, uh, FPGA board. Uh, we have the Libero code to support it working with the RTG4, for example, our rad tolerant FPGA. So um, lots of documentation that supports that and 
hopefully will make sim will simplify the customer's designing in process. Right. Um, there's also a video available. I have the uh, little I right? icon here, yeah, yeah, of a video that we have available on our website that will show this platform shown here actually, you know, operating a motor. So. So take a look. Lots of documentation, lots of information. Where can people go if they wanted right. to read more on the web or find out more right now? Yep. So on the website, uh, you can go a couple different ways. Uh, you can look at uh, the aerospace and defense solution section under products, and you should see a, a mixed signal section. So you could click on that, and you'll see several mixed signal ICs that I do want to draw your attention to here. Nice. Uh, we don't just have the LX7720. We have many other mixed signal ICs for space. And again, you see this acronym acronym RHBD, that's rad hard by design. So these are all, as I described earlier, designed from the ground up to withstand the harsh environment. So we've got the motor controller, the LX7720. We also have another very highly integrated device, the LX7730, which is a telemetry controller. And we have some other uh, functions as well, drivers, diode arrays. We have a lot of power protection devices, current limiters, um, e-fuses, and power switches. So take a look. Um, we also do have a, a special UR URL set up, and that is uh, microchip.com uh, forward slash space motor control. Sounds good. All one word. All space one word. motor control. And so yep. we're going to have links to what she just mentioned in the description in the comments. And if you guys don't see it, just email us at livestream at microchip.com. And we'll make sure that you guys get the information you need. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe that brings us to the end of today's presentation portion. A huge thank you to Dorian. A phenomenal topic. And I'm sure we are teeming with questions back there. So uh, Thank you. Let's get to it, Michael. What do we got? Oh, we, we have a few questions Ooh. starting to roll in. So uh, one from Wyman, um, are the evaluation boards shown available? And if so, where can I purchase them? Good question. Yeah, very good question. Um, they are available. Everything I've shown or talked about here today is available. And I would encourage you to reach out to whoever you deal with from Microchip, your salesperson, your, your application support. Uh, these are not yet on uh, the DevTools platform on Microchip, but yeah, just reach out to uh, or email any of the support links that you see on the website would be the best way. Cool. Yep, uh, we have one from Jason. Uh, what screening levels are offered on the LX7720? Uh, good question. So for all of these devices, our standard products, we always seek a QML certification. And so that means uh, various screening levels for space. Uh, there's what's called a, a QML Q and a QML V. Uh, QML V is the very stringent screening level. Uh, so, you know, so much testing and screening and additional life testing and, and uh, you know, t radiation testing on each wafer lot, things of that nature. So we have that uh, QML V flow available, and we also have the QML Q, which is also highly screened, a little less than the V. Um, and then for the plastic part that I showed, that is um, what we call space plastic, and we can we can explain that a little bit more. But it's um, you know, it's a reduced screening flow. Uh, to get you that lower cost packet, plastic package, so. Yep, uh, we have one from Alec. Um, is there any flight heritage on the Alex 7720? Uh, I like to say by similarity. So the LX7720 is relatively new. It's been in production for a little over a year now. And if you're familiar with space programs, it starts way back. Uh, the design ins take quite some time. Like well, the Mars Perseverance that I mentioned before, those they probably had their all their components selected many, many years ago. Um, 
So it takes a while to actually get launched up into space, but we do have several products and many years of flight heritage on similar products that, and by similar, I mean, they use the same processes, some of the same functional elements within the LX7720. Um, and so we have a lot of flight heritage that we could share on that. Uh, we have a couple from Hamlin and Seeker off LinkedIn. Nice. Um, what type of sensors are used for detection of, motor, of motion in space? That's number one. Um, okay. That might be a little tricky to answer. Um, and also, can we use microcontrollers instead of FPGAs? Okay, so I'm going to ask the second one first. Of course, yes, yes, you can use microcontrollers, and that's what uh, you know. Some of the, the dev tools I just showed and discussed. Um, Certainly, that depends on your application and, and, and what you want to do. And um, so we do have, again, the development tools that support it working with uh, the microcontrollers, particularly that particularly our rad tolerant microcontroller, the SAM RH71. Right. Um, so yes. And as far as sensors, I, I think there's several different kinds. I hope that uh, we've got people monitoring the chat, some of our, uh, you know, uh, engineers are monitoring the chat, so I'm hoping maybe someone can answer that directly. And if not, make sure to connect with us with the link we give you, and we'll we'll make sure we get you that answer. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Uh, another one about radiation from Ashish. Um, are radiation mm -hmm. test reports available? Absolutely. There's many of them. So if you follow those links and go to, uh, you know, the, the website, uh, the, the product pages for whichever product you're interested in, uh, you should see a tab that says radiation. Uh, there are a lot on this LX7720. There's quite a bit of radiation data. So we, we have reports for total dose. We have reports for single event. And we also have reports for elders. The, um, you know, extended low dose radiation testing. Um, we also have papers. Uh, we present a lot at certain uh, conferences and forums on the radiation test results. So you'll also see uh, white papers and things on the website that you can take a look at. Very, very good questions. Uh, what else we got, Michael? Mm -hmm. uh, we yeah. have one from Chris. Um, he's asking what type of motors can be supported by that part? Uh, various, uh, I think all different types, but maybe I shouldn't say all, but uh, we've brushless DC, obviously, and stepper motors, also PMSM, permanent magnet synchronous motors. Uh, those definitely can be supported. Again, you can, um, the, the data sheet that's available on the website is very, uh, very uh, informative and we'll answer a lot of those questions, so. Cool. Yeah. And yep. that, that was the last of the, the related questions. Um, the okay. last question. Yep. Well, so. good job knocking them out of the park. Um, if you guys good. are furiously typing one in, if we're still doing the show, just post a comment and we'll try to actually get to it. But if not, email us at livestream at microdrift.com and I will make sure that Dorian gets back to you guys. But uh, okay. a huge thank you to Dorian. Thank you for being our season three finale guest. That's pretty cool, oh, right? Oh, it was fun. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And so, like we mentioned, it's the uh, finale for season three, which implies that there is a whole bunch of other episodes of Coffee Break that you guys can watch. Just go to microchip.com forward slash live stream, and we have a wonderful playlist, and it is the perfect thing to perk up your day. And everybody is clapping that I made the joke for, like, I think the fifth time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so that was one note of programming. I think we have another note of programming, and we may have spoiled it a little bit already, but... Yeah, because I, I, I think that was the last question I'm going to ask from the booth. Right. Yeah. What's the last question, Michael? That, that was the last question yeah. I was going <laughs> to ask from the booth. Um, <laughs> right. So this is the season finale. Uh, I've been doing the Coffee Break shows. I think this is almost my 20th episode, or something near that effect. Michael's been doing it I, for I a very long time. 14. I, I did 14. I did two seasons. And so, so. it's quite a bit. And so with the end of season three of Coffee Break, uh, Michael and I will be taking a break from the hosting and booth duties, but we are coming back as a show, Coffee Break, for season four, and the host of which has been sitting next to me this entire time, and none of you guys knew. How are you doing, Ross? I'm doing well. Great. Nice to be here. 
Good to have you. Yeah. So are you excited to host season I'm, four? I'm thrilled. This has been such a great program. It's built such a great audience. Absolutely. Um, you know, over the last, uh, wow, been almost a year and a half now, I think. It's Something. a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, we've built a great audience. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to next season. There's some great stories to tell. There's always great stories to tell. Absolutely. And uh, I can't wait to bring them to you. Cool. Well, I will be watching. I will be learning with you guys in season four. And I think the only thing left is, Ross, uh, would you like to take us home? Well, actually, there is one thing before we go. Um, there's a, a little uh, tribute, shall oh, we say? Oh, I didn't know about this. You didn't know about this. This is shocking this, to but me. This is an opportunity to, oh. uh, to relive some of the highlights. To he, he want, stuck one in on us. Yeah, we're going to wander down memory lane here for a second. Well, and, hi, Dad. Uh, and, <laughs> and look at some of the, some of the highlights uh, oh, yeah. from the last, uh, the, last set of ser the last series. Let's do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. You can see my hair progressively getting longer and longer. <laughs> this is terrible. And I, I still have none. So hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah. hello, everybody. Wow. Hello, everybody. And welcome back to Coffee Break. Yeah, I do the well, same intro every time. It's your show now. What sort of questions do we have from the viewers? Uh, this is definitely a subject I, I like myself. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierce. Thanks, Clifford. <laughs> so welcome to this discussion. It's going to be another great one. Back to you, Clifford. Cool. Thank you very much, Pierce. I have a good one for you guys today. What sort of coffee did they drink on the Titanic? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, of course, right? Anything oh, I will never forget this for as long for? as I'm here. Cocoa um, drink. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I unmute myself? That's great music. <laughs> yes, we are live. We are genuinely live. That is the handle on YouTube. I like it. We'll be revving up uh, e-mobility solutions. They install Java. Good job. Um, so that brings Man. us towards the end of the show. They asked me to do a joke, and I'm delivering. How you doing, Kiwi? I'm doing good, thank you. Thank you to everybody in front of the camera, behind the Change camera. It takes a whole team to get this stuff going. <laughs> Thanks to the viewers once again, because without you, this wouldn't be happening. Otherwise, stay happy, stay healthy. Stay happy, stay healthy. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I will talk to you all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Excellent. Cool. So, thank you. This thank you. This has been... Uh, a great ride. Uh, you've built a great audience here. And I hope to uh, hope to continue and continue building it. To those of you out there, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being part of the journey. Thanks for being part of the program. Uh, look forward to seeing you in season four, uh, which is coming up pretty soon. soon yeah, uh, July, somewhere around there. Uh, so in the meantime, go back, take a look at the old ones, and we look forward to seeing you for the new ones. So, Cliff. Michael, stay happy. Thank stay you. Healthy. Stay happy. Stay healthy. To coin a phrase, and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> see you guys. See ya. Bye. Thanks. Bye.